Well, I want to uh, welcome everybody here as we uh, celebrate uh, the formal announcement and the formal signing of the uh, Margaret and Thomas Murray Professorship in Catholic Thought at the University of Toledo. I'm Jim Basic. I'm the um, co-pastor of Corpus Christi Parish at the university, uh, signed there by Bishop Huffman, and uh, here sort of representing the Catholic community. I have out here my colleague Dan Zack, uh, co-pastor, and we have other people from our staff that are here, Pam Mesrell, our pastoral associate, and Lori Schaub over here to my left, who's... Uh, working uh, with me especially on this course and is an intern and volunteer with us uh, this year. So we have other members of our staff and I'm here sort of representing the Catholic community, which uh, incidentally ha it constitutes about 42% of the student population at the university. And so um, when we looked at that situation on the campus, it seemed to me there were particular needs. There was a need to help people to understand the religious dimension of their lives. There was a need uh, to help uh, people explore uh, the religious heritage that's helped shape Western culture and specifically here in the United States. And when uh, that is what has motivated us to um, provide this uh, Catholic professorship. So in simple terms, what we've done is collect a lot of money from very good people who have uh, very generously contributed, uh, including Tom and Ann Murray, who are here, and Tom honoring his parents uh, with giving us a generous donation for this uh, professorship. And we have collected this. We give it to the university, and the university, therefore, uh, administers that money according to all the uh, standards of the academic community. In, in carrying out our role of being dialogue partners, we found a lot of people who have ex been extremely helpful to us in the university structure. Carl Patton, the um, vice president for academic affairs, who's not here and sends regrets, and uh, Carl has been very helpful. Marty Robbins is in the back, has uh, been a good helper to us in all of this, the vice president for university relations. Gene Haberman, who is uh, up here, the end of our listing here, seating there, and uh, Gene has been helpful as well. Out here is Scott McNall, who I want to especially thank for his uh, creativity in helping to make this possible. Not only that, but as this all gets administered, Scott McNall, the Dean of Arts and Sciences College, uh, is the major one putting this into operation. He is the one who forms the committee and makes final decisions about the professors who come to occupy this particular position. So I want to thank Scott for his help uh, throughout, and especially his creative ideas in making all of this possible. I don't think we'd be here now if it was not for some of those creative ideas. I appreciate that very much. And we have received special support from uh, President Horton, and I want to uh, comment on that as I introduce him now. He's a distinguished geographer, as people might know. He's written 10 books and monographs in that area. He's been the past president of the University of Oklahoma. And in various ways, he has been helpful to us, uh, the members of the religious community. He has sat down with the members of the Interfaith Council, listened well to us, and taken some decisive actions that we have thought to be beneficial. Uh, he has been um, an active participant in some of the lectures that we have held. I remember him uh, grilling one of our speakers extensively one evening, which was uh, uh, helpful to us and impressive. I remember uh, when we had the memorial mass for Melissa Herstrom, and uh, President Horton, I think, was uh, sitting on the floor uh, there with his wife, and an unobtrusive presence, simply a presence on that occasion, said nothing and didn't formally participate, but we appreciated his presence. Later on at Melissa's memorial uh, service, the university-wide one, uh, he was able to be an empathetic spokesman for the grief of the university community and uh, also express uh, hopes uh, for our university community. And I was just uh, with him this morning as he performed another difficult duty and made comments at Dr. K. Meadows' uh, memorial service. So um, it is uh, with a lot of gratitude and uh, pleasure that I introduce now to you President Horton. Thank you. Bishop Hoffman, uh, one of the first things I want to say to you is uh, how much I appreciate your appointment of Father Basic to uh, our university community because not only does he provide a great deal of uh, 
religious sustenance to our students and our faculty and staff, but uh, he's an outstanding intellectual in his own right. And uh, we uh, coerce him as much as we can into uh, teaching courses here at the University of Toledo. Uh, this is a day that brings a new dimension to the University of Toledo's academic and cultural profile and perhaps to the profile of American public higher education in general. Since the adoption of the Bill of Rights in 1791, with its prohibition on the power of Congress to make any law respecting an establishment of religion, tax-supported institutions of higher education in the United States have tended to honor that prohibition by simply ignoring the religious dimension of human thought. Such an approach sharply limits our full understanding of the human experience. I think we would do well to remember the full text of that section of the First Amendment. It goes on to say, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This is the phrasing of such men as Thomas Jefferson, who by the best reports, reports was himself an agnostic, but also a passionate advocate of the rights of man. The religious experience in its broadest sense is a legitimate subject of academic inquiry. We have carefully crafted an agreement that preserves the proper separation of church and state, protects the integrity of the university's process for the independent selection of faculty, but meets the very legitimate interest of the Catholic community in having their values, their knowledge, and their view of the deity represented in a serious academic context. To the best of our knowledge, the professorship we are establishing today is the first endowed professorship in Catholic thought at a public university in the United States. It is our hope that other religious communities in Toledo will consider establishing similar positions at UT and that other public institutions of higher education will follow our lead. The Margaret and Thomas Murray Professorship in Catholic Thought will enrich the values that the university derives from the study of religion as well as from the ministries that serve us. I'd like to extend uh, to Tom Murray uh, and his wife, Anne, our deep appreciation for this gift, which is made in the honor of Tom's parents. I know that the professorship in Catholic thought is the culmination of years and months of effort on the part of Father Basic and others to bring something really unique to the UT campus. He shares our hope that other traditions will consider establish, establishing professorships in Judaic, Muslim, and Protestant thought, which would further enhance the intellectual life of the university and enable students to study other religious traditions as well. The very real, impressive list of scholars who will teach the first course this spring assures us that those who will teach in the Catholic professorship in the future will be equally distinguished. Bishop Hoffman has our gratitude not only for his support of this program, but for his willingness to support a strong presence on our campuses. This presence has resulted in many outstanding Catholic theologians speaking here, a monthly opportunity for faculty and staff collegiality through co-sponsorship of the Catholic and Protestant ministries, and a strong and viable Newman Club, which has, has become one of our largest and most active student organizations. May I again, on behalf of our Board of Trustees and all at the university, thank the Murray family, as well as the many other contributors who are making this professorship possible. Surely this will be a significant addition to our intellectual stature as we continue to achieve new educational goals. And now it's uh, my pleasure to introduce to you the Most Reverend James R. Hoffman. As you well know, he is installed as bishop here of the 330,000 member Catholic Diocese of Toledo in 1981. He's been a very, very energetic leader in this community and has served his faith well. And we're very pleased to have him as a friend of the University of Toledo. 
and we're very pleased that he could be with us today. Thanks, Dr. Horton. As a matter of fact, uh, February 17th was the 11th anniversary. And uh, some days it seems longer, and of course some days it seems shorter <laughs> since um, I took on these, um, these responsibilities. I'm delighted to be present today because it's a very significant moment for the Catholic community and its um, ongoing um, relationship with the University of Toledo. Um, I would like to begin by saying a word of thanks uh, to Tom and Margaret Murray. Uh, Tom is deceased and Margaret uh, is still living. I hope her son will take words back that um, I expressed to her my gratitude because I think that the possibility of, uh, of a professorship such as this and the support of such comes from people who have uh, um, a great uh, sense of the value of, of their tradition. And it seems to me that uh, that uh, Thomas and Margaret instilled in their children uh, precisely that kind of uh, conviction. And I'm sure that it allows uh, Tom and his wife Ann to be so generous in the establishment of this professorship. Also, certainly to Tom and Ann, uh, my gratitude. Uh, I know that you've been long time friends of, um, of Father Basic. I know that you've been um, very active people in the Sandusky community. I was uh, saying a little earlier, I can remember the last time you were on the stump, and I look forward to the next time, uh, whenever that might be. But uh, certainly our thanks and, and uh, expression of gratitude for your generosity, and I'm sure that you'll take a continued interest in it. And um, I hope that um, our paths will continue to cross as this, uh, this dream becomes a reality. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> to the university, I do want to say my thanks. I know how difficult at times it can be uh, to get some matter like this worked out. And I know that the issue of separation of church and state often is held up as a, um, as a very um, significant reality. Um, <clears throat> I'm grateful to Dr. Horton and uh, to his co-workers uh, who have made this a possibility. I know he took a personal interest in it, and um, I know that it's taken us some time to work out the legal aspects of it. But uh, I think we've worked it out um, to our mutual interest. And so I express to you, Dr. Horton, my special thanks. And um, my thanks, too, for your fine leadership of uh, the University of Toledo. Um, I would like to echo your words, too. I do hope that the other um, traditions will see this as something significant and uh, will find the wherewithal, perhaps, to uh, create chairs that um, for the Reformation churches, or um, for the Orthodox Church, for uh, Judaism, for Islam. Um, whenever you read the, um, the paper, you have to have some kind of understanding of uh, these various religions, it seems to me, uh, to make out what's going on in places like the Middle East, um, or, or wherever it might happen to be. It seems to me often that ignorance of the religious dimension or the importance of the tradition uh, could lead us into, um, into some um, uh, dead ends. Then, too, to Father uh, Basic, my thanks. I know that it's been a special dream of his. Um, I liked the idea in the peach section the other day that we already have in Toledo, one of the world's outstanding uh, theologians. Um, somebody read that to me Saturday morning at breakfast, and, and while there was no name associated, I said that could only be one person. Um, and uh, not that the peach section is infallible, but, uh, <laughs> but I thought that uh, reference to you was, uh, was timely, and, uh, and Father Buff, of course, uh, agreed completely. <laughs> um, but I know that you've worked uh, hard on this, and um, I, I'm, I'm delighted for your sake and, and, and for our tradition's sake that it's come to this fruition. Um, I'd just like to take it a moment or two, and this is kind of unrehearsed, but why I think it's so important for the religious community uh, to be present in the academic environment. Uh, I'm quite aware of the fact that in uh, some circles, at least since the Enlightenment, that um, the whole development of um, what I want to call the scientific method uh, seems to have uh, become, uh, in, in the minds of some, maybe the only way uh, to truth or to knowledge. And um, of course, if it's the only way to truth and knowledge, then we who come out of a, um, a different uh, um, method 
uh, would be uh, left with the sense that uh, what we have to offer might be unimportant, but it's terribly important. Um, a year ago, when we were getting involved in uh, the war in, uh, in uh, the Middle East, um, I mean, it wasn't enough just to have the military people speak about that. You had to have the philosophers, the moralists, the theologians uh, speaking about the reality. And um, I don't know whether the training at West Point tells you what, a, uh, what the just war theory is all about, but I do know that it's important for citizens of our country to have some understanding of a just war theory because we have to make decisions as to whether the war was moral or immoral. And um, it just seems to me that um, possibilities like that come to my mind when I think about uh, placing uh, the richness of our tradition um, at the disposal of those who, may, who might want to come and, and imbibe in it. And um, can, you, can you discuss the just war theory without knowing something about Augustine and something about his uh, initial reflections in regard to the whole notion of war? Uh, at the same time, it's not enough to leave it with Augustine. I mean, the kind of methods of war that they had in those days obviously are quite different from the uh, possibilities that we have today. But, but the importance, as a matter of fact, when you think about Western civilization, is it possible to ignore someone like Augustine? Now, admittedly, he might come up in, in a history course or somewhere else, but, but you can hardly appreciate Augustine unless you have some sense of his uh, theological underpinnings. I think this is the kind of uh, possibility that this professorship has. So I want to, um, again, express my gratitude. I do hope that the, uh, the uh, upcoming course is um, well subscribed. I'm sure the university will make every effort to provide um, a chair. I do know some, um, some of those, uh, like my age, who have been told they can't sign up till March 1st, but they're waiting, and uh, they're going to be there. So um, while you get all these undergraduates, uh, save some uh, positions for those of us who are non-traditional students uh, who want to participate and hear the wisdom of uh, o. Avery Dulles or, um, or, gee, I don't remember Dick all of them, McCormick. Ann Carr, Richard McBrien, sure, Dick McCormick. Uh, did I see Lisa Cahill? Cahill? Um, so all of them. Uh, Tom Murray is a national figure in the law profession. He's a partner in the firm of Murray and Murray in Sandusky. He is a member of the National Faculty of the College of Advocacy at the University of California and a lecturer at many national seminars for the Practicing Law Institute of New York. He is a lecturer in trial practice at Case Western Reserve University School of Law, has authored two books for lawyers, published 35 articles in legal journals, and has been honored nationally for his lectures and writing throughout the United States. In fact, the monetary grant which accompanied this award was used to produce two programs on the causes of family violence for public television. He is nationally recognized as a pioneer in the field of videotape evidence, having become the first lawyer in the nation to use videotape testimony in court, and the procedure is now accepted in all 50 of the United States. His educational efforts include producing and moderating 25 educational videotapes for lawyers. His lectures on law-related subjects, medicine, and economics have been given in Canada, England, and the former Soviet Union, in addition to our own United States. He is a cum laude graduate of Boston College, holds a Juris Doctorate from the University of Virginia. And I'd say a little bit about his wife as well, although I think Tom's going to be the spokesperson today. Ann Murray is a former Ann Leach of Charlottesville, Virginia, and a graduate in education of the University of Virginia. You notice their paths crossed back then. She is a past president of the American Association of University Women and is a board member of the Firelands Habitat for Humanity, the Erie County Teen Pregnancy Prevention Task Force, and has served on the Council of Saints Peter and Paul Church in Sandusky for nine years. Her council service has included that of president, membership on the board and its endowment committee, and on several other committees. And I might point out, they are the parents of seven children. Tom? First, may I thank you, President Horton, for that generous uh, introduction and for the care that you have taken to announce uh, this formation of this professorship in Catholic thought. Your presence and the care you've taken with this ceremony honors us. It honors my mother and my father. And for that, 
we are most grateful. Uh, and you too, uh, Bishop Huffman, uh, we are honored by the care that you've taken with, in preparing your remarks and by the fact that you've given up time to be here today and to share with us your thoughts. I want to just say one thing, if I might, now while I have the cameras here and the press is here, it is true that you remember my last time on the stump. <laughs> uh, I, you know, as we were driving down, and Ann and, Ann and I were talking about the fact that uh, this professorship by itself is quite a tribute to the mutuality of of uh, respect and openness and uh, understanding that exists between the University of Toledo and its leadership and the, and the Diocese of Toledo and its leadership. And I think that uh, as we contemplate the possibilities which this professorship brings to this community, the university community and the broader community, Anne and I are heartened by the prospect that not only will it be a lasting tribute to my mother and father, who I will tell you just a little bit about in a moment, but I think it, it will serve as a lasting tribute to the spirit of openness and respect and cooperation which exists between this university and, and the diocese. Uh, you've been so kind to mention my mother and father, and I, I, and I, I tell people often that uh, while I've made some poor decisions in my life, uh, the decision I made on the day I sat down and selected my parents is one that I do not regret. <laughs> um, I, I cannot, uh, of course, the purpose here isn't to, to recognize the biological role of my parents in bringing me here, but I would like to recognize uh, some of the achievements of their life that influenced uh, me and I think also Anne in our decision to endow this, this professorship. Uh, my, uh, my father uh, was a man who uh, was one of seven children, and his own father never went further than the sixth grade, but he had a great uh, love of learning. In fact, if the accounts I have gathered in Sandusky are true, he became a, a kind of a resident scholar. He was a fireman, but he read voraciously and widely on many different subjects, so much so that he became a, a resource for the lawyers in our community with his sixth grade education. They would come to him for research on briefs and knowledge. And, and so he imparted to my father, uh, as my father grew up, a great sense of the importance of learning as a discipline, as a disciplined approach to life. My mother was one of two children from working class railroad family in Lakewood, Ohio. And as I can, I, uh, her parents died when I was very young, but my sense of it is that that they were, my mother and her sister were given a sense of life as a great gift. And the idea of faith was that life is, 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 one, is a great gift with, which imposes on us a tremendous responsibility to live our lives with a sense of gratitude for the fact that we've been given this great gift of life. And, uh, and that means trying to find out how to live it right. It means trying to find out the moral principles that are in us all deeply, the spiritual impulses that we feel in our best moments and sometimes actually manage to live our lives by and to discipline our lives by. And, uh, you know, my mother and father, as a result of this marriage, managed to impart these two thoughts, the love of learning, the importance of learning as a pathway to a successful life, and the idea of life as a gift, which carries with it a great responsibility to give back. And they lived that, in, a, in, a, in, a, in I think, in a very beautiful way, and they imparted by, not by their by their lectures or by what they told us, by the way they lived their lives. They imparted to us uh, these ideals. And a tremendous sacrifices to themselves. They managed, did my mother and father, to put eight children uh, through Catholic universities. And, you know, the last 12 years of my father's life, he fought a, a heroic battle with lung cancer. And against all the odds, he survived for 12 years. And he died 24 hours after my youngest brother graduated from college. It was as if his life's work was done. He'd seen his last child uh, achieve a college education. And uh, uh, 
and I, I couldn't, uh, as I reflected on the possibility of this chair, I really couldn't think of um, any more appropriate way to honor uh, the achievements of my mother and father uh, than uh, this commitment. But I have to say, and if I might conclude my remarks, that there were other, a few other factors that influenced Anne's thinking and my thinking in reaching the point where we made this, uh, this commitment. And one of the factors has already been touched upon by Bishop Huffman and by President Horton. And I suppose I could summarize it by, and maybe I'm, I hope I'm paraphrasing this accurately, but I hear in both President Horton's remark and Bishop Huffman's remark the idea that, that this professorship or professorships at, at public universities and religious traditions is an idea whose time has come. As I was driving down here today, I was trying to think of some a person or some, some thinker who might capture what I understand to be the idea behind this professorship. And I, re I was reflecting with Anne driving down some of, uh, some of the things that I learned as early as 1959 and 60. Maybe Father Jim can help me out. Was not Paul Tillich the great Protestant theologian at Harvard in the early 60s? Right. And I, I was at Boston College at that time. And I remember uh, Dr. Tillich, a great, great Protestant uh, thinker and theologian, uh, talking about the relationship in his writings and thinkings about the relationship between culture and religion. And at risk of uh, stepping into Father Jim's territory uh, here, I think the basic idea behind much of his teaching was that in, particularly in a pluralistic democratic society, there are two great dangers if you disconnect culture and religion. The one is the tendency uh, towards authoritarianism and dogmatism that can lead to in religious intolerance. And I think we can see that sometimes in our public life, where religious intolerance leads to social and legal injustices. The other extreme when you disconnect culture from religion and religious impulses is that you make man and man's selfish pursuits the ultimate purpose of society and the ultimate reason for living which leads to egoism and materialism and, and fierce and sometimes unfair competition, uh, uncivilized competition. And it was, it was, the, it was the genius of, of Dr. Tillich to see the importance of an ongoing dialogue between religion and culture. And it seems to me the idea behind the, and the genius behind Father Basic's work in bringing this professorship to fruition is that through professorships in religious tradition at public universities. We can add, we, we, can, we can help students, faculty, and members of the community understand how important it is if we, in a pluralistic democratic society, if we are to maintain mutual respect and tolerance for each other, to understand the relationship between the, re the great teachings of religion and the very the whoop and fabric of culture itself. And so as, we, as I look at, our, at our, our nation today and I look at our, as we attempt to define our role in the world, in the world, as we try to deal with issues from issues uh, like abortion, economic justice, environmental issues, uh, corporate uh, uh, justice, and, and so forth, a just legal system, and on and on, you can see, I think we can see the importance here of working in a civilized way with mutual respect for each other uh, towards some consensus on the great issues which face us. And it seems to me this university, uh, by the establishment of this chair, is perhaps a harbinger of other chairs and other great religious traditions, can add to the process of civilizing and humanizing uh, the public discourse which makes, uh, which makes for the kind of democracy and the kind of country that we all strive to achieve. Uh, the second factor, and I'll bring this quickly to a conclusion, but the second factor, frankly, with Bishop Huffman, was your commitment to this professorship, particularly your willingness to commit uh, Jim Basic, uh, the author of this idea, your commitment uh, to giving him the time necessary to uh, get this established and get it working. It was a major consideration in uh, Anne's and my thinking about making this commitment. And finally, the final factor that influenced us was Jim Basic himself. Um, most of you know uh, Father Jim, and I'm afraid I would only detract from, uh, uh, from his standing in your eyes if I attempted to 
uh, truthfully tell you what I think about him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have, if I were to try to capture, as I will do in two sentences or less, Jim's uh, commitment. Jim is one of the most passionately committed pastors and teachers I've ever met. As I see his vocation, it is to use his God-given gifts, the ability to analyze and to take uh, on, uh, seemingly unrelated events and ideas, to pull them together, and to help those who he works with as a pastor, as a teacher, as a friend, to help them understand the deeper meaning of life and the purpose of life. That's a tremendous vocation. And uh, Bishop Huffman and President Horton, uh, Father Jim's a real treasure, uh, as I see it, to our community. And so as I see this, this professorship is, is, um, is a wonderful expression of that genius that he has as a pastor and leader and teacher. And so I'm, I'm proud uh, to, um, to lend to this professorship the name of, of, my, of my mother and father. And once again, I want to thank you for all the effort that all of you, not only the leaders of the university and of the diocese, but you here uh, representing various branches of the university have put into making this day possible. I appreciate the kind words and to uh, speak for the president and the bishop in saying that word of thanks also. Uh, just a reminder that uh, this professorship is being inaugurated uh, this spring quarter.